Hello there, everybody, and welcome back to Buckeye Politics. It's me, your favorite Ohioan. So today, we're going to be looking at last night's uh, special elections and um, runoffs, which took place across s several southern states, including the states of Alabama, Georgia, and Virginia. Um, let's get right into it by looking at the state of Alabama. So in the Alabama Republican uh, runoff, we had Katie Britt, who is a former staffer for a rhino, Senator Richard Shelby from the state of Alabama. She went up against Mo Brooks, who is an absolute chad, one of my favorite um, rep members of the House of Representatives and one of my favorite candidates running this cycle. Mo Brooks was actually originally endorsed by former President Donald Trump, but he uh, lost the Trump endorsement back in March. Trump says it was because because Mo Brooks went quote unquote woke because he said at one point that the Republicans should focus on 2022 and 2024 and not 2020. Despite the fact that Mo Brooks is one of the fiercest defenders of Trump's claims of the 2020 election being stolen and one of the biggest proponents of election integrity. So you might be saying, why did Trump endorse Mo Brooks for going woke if Mo Brooks is one of the biggest supporters of election integrity? Well, that's because, simply put, Mo Brooks' polling numbers were abysmal. Mo Brooks got the Trump endorsement and then basically sat at home and hoped that that would carry him across the state, which, honestly, you would think a state like Alabama, it probably would have, but it did not. Mo Brooks began to slip in the polls, and Trump was afraid that his beautiful record of um, endorsements and him having so much control over the Republican Party would fail. And so he freaked out, made up a stupid reason about Mo Brooks apparently going woke, unendorsed him, and then let the primary run its course. Mo Brooks got his act together, he worked very hard, and he managed to make it to the runoff. Or as you see here, he unfortunately lost to Katie Britt, who eventually did get the Trump endorsement. What is ironic about this is that Trump was actually attacking Katie Britt on social media several times in the past. He was defending, he was attacking her back in like September, October, November. He was defending Mo Brooks and attacking Katie Britt. And now all of a sudden he endorses Katie Britt because really, he, he it is his record. So Trump, this is, I, I'm a big fan of yours, this is going to be tough love, but you cannot just backstab your strongest fighters in the House and the Senate for people who probably won't even vote with you half the time, who don't agree with you, simply because you don't like what they say, and you're worried about your endorsement record. Like, I'm sorry, but Trump, I'm viewing this as tough love, but Mo Brooks is one of the best Republican congressmen out there, and he would have been one of the best Republican senators. But because you don't like that he was not doing well in the polls, you unendorsed him and supported Katie Britt, who seems decent, actually, when you, her, when you look at her issues page and the way she's ran her campaign. But I'm, I think that's pretty much a grift. I honestly, she, she's yet to see. Katie Britt could be a good senator, but I, I think it's just a grift, just to get voters. So, yeah, really, Trump, Mo Brooks fought like hell for you. He was at January sixth. He was, he fought all the lawsuits. He stood with you this entire time. And then he took a dip in the polls. He wanted to protect your endorsement record, and you unendorsed him. And now we may very well get an, a, a rhino in the Senate. Not saying Katie Britt's going to be a rhino. If you look at her issues page and the campaign she's ran, she it looks pretty solid. But her campaign of working with Richard Shelby, her endorsements, all most of them coming from big tech and other big corporations in Austin and California, tend to say otherwise. So, yeah. So, Mo Brooks did both did best in his congressional district in northern Alabama. He managed to only win one county, which was Shelby County, and which is pretty much in his congressional district. But, yeah, so really, Mo Brooks, I like him a lot. I really wish he would have he won this race. But, Katie Britt, I, I do support her in the general. Do, vote for Katie Britt if you live in Alabama. But, we have to be skeptical of her, all I'm going to say. She's a shady past, and her supporters are also very shady. That was really it. There's no other. There are a few other runoffs, but they're all for pretty much the Democrats and the Republicans. Or the races are safe are. So let's look, let's look at the Georgia um, runoff results. I'm mostly focused on the House runoffs because there are a few Democrat ones for governor and lieutenant governor and stuff, but really not too concerned with that. So the big ones were in the 6th district and the 10th district. So in the 6th district, um, Rich, Richard McCormick, who is not really not really David McCormick, and Rich McCormick is actually a great on the issues. David McCormick, if you do not know, he was the Republican nominee, or he was a Republican candidate for Senate in Pennsylvania. He lost by about 900 votes to Dr. Oz, and thank God he did. Rich McC uh, David McCormick was horrible. Luckily, the McCormick in Georgia, who is very is very based on the issues, and he managed to beat Jake Evans. Now, Jake Evans was endorsed by Donald Trump, but that's mostly because Jake's daddy worked with Trump. Jake Evans is horrible on the issues. He is literally a moderate Republican. He supported Black Lives Matter. 
Um, he's the he's this young Gen Z like wannabe like we're the future, and then he's literally just a liberal with an R next to his name. So, but Trump endorsed him because his father is a good friend of Trump's. He was in his cabinet, and basically just through connections, he got the Trump endorsement. Luckily, the voters of Georgia were smart. They saw right through Jake Evans, and they supported Richard McCormick, who won this election with 66% of the vote to Jake Evans 33%. Mitch McCormick is going to be an excellent sen an excellent congressman for Georgia in the uh, sixth district. I'm very happy he won. That was an excellent that's an excellent race. And it's one of the few c cases um, where I'm very happy that Trump's endorsed candidate lost. Actually, last night I think the three big wins we had were all against Trump endorsed candidates. So you know, <laughs> interesting to look at. The tenth congressional district we had Mike Collins, who was a truck driver and a very based man, who ran against Vernon Jones. Now, Vernon Jones was also endorsed by Donald Trump. Vernon Jones is an African-American and former Democratic state, rep state senator or state representative. I'm not exactly sure. But he was a Democrat. He was in the state assembly in Georgia. He switched parties because he said that Trump's, um, Trump's uh, policies fa helped African-Americans more than the Democrat policies did. And he's basically the face of Blexit. Now, that sounds all great and good, but Vernon Jones is – that was probably all grift. Vernon Jones is abysmal. His past is scary. This guy has sexual assault and rape allegations from when he was a county commissioner. This guy has a lawyer who had the knowledge to possibly bring him down, a died suspiciously, suspiciously in a car accident. This guy organized forced diversity. He fired white people when he didn't put black people in their place in the early 2000s when he was a county commissioner. He was he supported the removal of Confederate statues as a county commissioner, as a state as a Democrat state legislature. He was he supported he did not support overturning abortion, which he claims to be a huge supporter because he's a, he's religious now. So Vernon Jones has a very sketchy past, and Trump endor Trump endorsed him simply because he kissed his butt and said, "Oh Trump, look you did so much for my community. You did so much for people like me. I thank you, thank you." And Trump was like, "Oh well, Bob, this guy's a great guy. I'm going to endorse him. He's he, he likes me." But he was not the best choice. Mike Collins was so much better on the issues, and he was such, so much, just a better person in, in, in honesty. Vernon Jones is a disgusting individual, and I'm very glad he lost handily to Mike Collins. So, big wins here in Georgia. Uh, going up to the Virginia House results, there's they're really not two crazy races. The one that I am most happy about is the 7th District, which is when Vega... Um, who is, she is, she is actually a very, a top member of the Yunkin campaign and Yunkin staff. She is a very based, she's very based. Um, she did a lot of work with Glenn Yunkin's victory in 2021 over Terry McAuliffe, and she's also done a lot with bringing the Virginia Republican Party kind of back to the spotlight and making Virginia actually possibly a Republican-leaning state again. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but if it does, she has been a big part of that behind the scenes, whether it be Yunkin's victory or community organizing, stuff like that, and she's very good on the issues too. So I'm very happy that she managed to win her race. It was very close, and she only got 28% of the vote, but in the end, she won, and that's all I really care about. So with that, thank you for watching this video. If you did enjoy, which I hope you did, please be sure to like and subscribe for more.